Good afternoon. Our next speaker, Major George Filer, spent over 20 years in the United States Air Force as an intelligence officer, and he accumulated 5,000 flying hours. He currently serves as the Eastern Regional Director for the Mutual UFO Network. He is the publisher of the wildly popular Filer's Files. If you haven't subscribed to it, I would highly recommend it. Because with that being said, it is my pleasure and honor to bring to the stage Major George Filer. <laughs> it's hard to see up here. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I'd like to think that the um, audience that listens to me are some of the finest people in the world and some of the smartest. Is that right? <laughs> well, so we agree. Um, I'm going to start out uh, why I got interested in UFOs, basically, other than seeing them as a child in the Air Force when I was flying. We, uh, th that's me. <laughs> when I was a little bit younger, flying tankers over England, we um, were told that the fighters had a bad habit of not coming back when they chased the UFOs, and they thought that it would be safer for the tankers to chase them away because um, we didn't have any weapons on board, and they didn't seem to return the fire on anybody who uh, only if only if they were attacked would they return the fire. In any case, um, London Control uh, picked up a UFO while we were um, over the uh, sea uh, just off the coast of Norfolk and um, asked us if we would uh, actually uh, intercept a bogey that was about a thousand feet high and over uh, the center of England. It was uh, about here, over Stonehenge area. And uh, <coughs> we started uh, descending down to some uh, thousand feet. We're up at about 33,000 feet. And as we flew down, we passed the red line in the aircraft, which means we were going too fast. We had to slow down. And I often wonder if. Uh, Crews uh, chasing UFOs often uh, exceed the speed limit, so to speak, and uh, destroy their own aircraft because it's an exciting situation. Now, on our radar, we picked up a huge radar return out about 50 miles. And if you take off from England, one of the largest radar returns is the Firth of Forth Bridge in Scotland. And uh, this is a picture of the bridge. It's about a mile long. And the radar return from the bridge was almost exactly the same as the radar return from the UFO over the center of England, except that it was flying, which gives you, <laughs> gives you an idea of the size of the craft that was there and why they wanted us to chase it away, basic, basically. It was over Stonehenge area, Oxford Stonehenge area, just kind of floating around there. It's interesting at that part of the world on the ground, there's what's called curses, which exactly match the shape and size of the UFOs, or the motherships. This is about what it looked like, only it was off in the distance. We saw a bunch of lights on it. It was actually at night. It looked like a cruise ship at sea, or an aircraft carrier, or something like that. And as we got about a mile away, it went up into space, pretty much like the shuttle launches at night. And um, apparently it looked something like this, actually in space. This is a, a drawing, so to speak, of it. <coughs> the interesting part of this is uh, a couple of weeks after we had landed, uh, we got an invitation to a dining in with uh, Prince Philip as a speaker. And Prince Philip asked to see the air crews and sit with the air crews, and we sat around with those who had chased UFOs telling our stories. And I told Prince Philip pretty much the story I just told you and asked him why he was interested in UFOs. And he said that his uncle, Lord Mountbatten, had uh, seen them up close in Asia. And that because his uncle had seen them and believed in them, he himself believed in them. 
And because he believed in them and Earl von Batten believed in them, I believed in them. <laughs> now what's interesting about this is that, in other words, I had it confirmed by, besides seeing it and having it on radar, when uh, two of the great men of the world are convinced that UFOs exist, that convinced me. Now, NASA's satellite photos is also see UFOs. I don't know if you're aware of this, but this is a NASA satellite photo of pretty much what we saw, and this is taken from space. And seeing this photo got me interested in the fact that uh, these UFOs must come from somewhere. Well, one of the likely places that they come from is uh, Mars. And so we started looking at satellite photos from Mars. Now, when we checked with NASA and some of the top people there, they said that uh, images do not show evidence of anything living or formally living on Mars. And the pictures you see that, that look like people or animals or plants or buildings or whatever are misinterpreted. They're just kind of light or uh, projection and two-dimensional. In other words, NASA says there's nothing there. So I'd like you to consider that in my briefing, that uh, NASA and JPL feel that there's nothing significant on Mars. Now, I didn't do this by myself. I didn't evaluate all these thousands of pictures by myself. This group of men and others have done a great deal of the work, so to speak. And much has been sent to me by um, Dr. Tam, Tom Ben Flandert, and Dr. John Brandenburg, and Sir Charles Schultz, and Norman Bryden, and Richard Buckley. And the group goes on, and Joe Skipper, and so on. The, the center of the slide, please? Yes. Can they, can they center the slide at all? There's a problem there. Do you know why? <laughs> you just go ahead, I'll try to fix it for you. Okay. <clears throat> well, in any case, there's a lot of people that have looked at these uh, images on Mars, and you can go on your own home computer, so to speak, and look up uh, Mars and JPL and uh, the European Space Agency. In any case, the images are there, and you can look at them. And these are what we consider some of the most interesting ones. Um, Mars, of course, uh, was formed about the same time that Earth was, some five billion years ago. And um, we'll catch up with some of the slides, but the, the Hubble telescope is actually picking up planets being made, so to speak, right at this time. And Mars is very similar to Earth, but it's much smaller. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> In any case, here's the uh, protoplanet, so to speak, uh, essentially at this time being formed, and the size of Earth versus Mars. As you can see, we're much smaller. Mars has about 38% of the gravity of Earth. So anything coming from Mars, taking off from Mars, only needs, uh, you might say, 38% of the propulsion capability. Now, Mars... <laughs> goes around us, uh, so to speak, uh, and comes as close as 78 million miles and uh, as far out as 378 million miles. And people don't think of it, but planets all through history for millions of years have been hit by meteorites. And uh, it's not really safe in the, uh, so to speak, uh, on Earth or on Mars. And Mars particularly has lots of problems because it's near the asteroid belt. And there's two moons on Mars, Phobos and Deimos, fear and terror <laughs> is the actual name. Uh, Mars is kind of interesting that it has the largest volcano in the solar system, maybe in the universe, but we don't know what's exactly out there. But we do know there's some 1,200 planets outside of our solar system. And here we have Olympus Mons, which is 88,000 feet tall. 
much higher than the um, mountains all around Earth. And here it is again, it's some 30 miles wide. And this shows the sun, <coughs> the uh, Venus and so on, and, and Mars. I don't know if you can see uh, Earth and Mars and the asteroid belt and Jupiter. In any case, they feel that uh, there was some kind of an explosion on the asteroid belt in the past, and they have evidence of that at Saturn with this bright area on the moon Lapidus. And on Mars itself, there's indications of a huge explosion, and even to some extent to one on Earth, that uh, it's not really safe in, uh, in their solar system throughout history. This shows you some of the uh, deep valleys that occurred there, the Valles Marinas Canyon hit by a moon or an asteroid. It's some two to eight kilometers deep, and it's uh, 5,000 miles uh, long, or 5,000 kilometers long. One thing interesting about Mars is that uh, when these meteorites hit Mars, they bounce some off into space, and this is one that came to Earth, and it's thought to be 4.5 billion years old, and it has organic matter in it. It has microfossils indicating that there was life on Mars as long ago as uh, four and a half million years. Not only was there life on Mars, there was a huge ocean. Roughly half the planet had ocean on it. Uh, Malacandrian Ocean. And uh, this is a map of the elevation showing the area where the ocean existed. Now, one of the things that happened to Mars is there's a nuclear holocaust about 180 million years ago. And um, they don't know exactly what happened. There's no real deep holes on Mars indicating that it was a natural phenomenon. It was more likely a war on Mars between civilizations. It's kind of interesting that uh, the aliens who come here keep on war warning us against wars, nuclear type particularly. And one of the things they found about Mars is that it's very cold, like you've all always heard, but what you probably did not hear, that in the summer, the temperature gets warm. It gets up to 81 degrees or so on the soil. Consequently, during the summer, uh, liquid water can flow. Going back to the turn of the century, about 1890 or so, uh, the astronomers got their new telescopes and they're looking at Mars and they're making drawings of what they see there. And Schiaparelli, the astronomer from Italy, decided that he could see Canali. And this was interpreted as canals and people around the world felt that there was canals on Mars. And possibly there is, we'll show some Thing they could be called canals later. An American, Percival Lowell, wrote a book about Mars and told people that there was canals on Mars and that these canals took the water from the poles and moved them into the cities on Mars and that there were, in fact, cities there. And, but since then, scientists have said that that is not a fact. But there's some indication that maybe there is cities there. One of the things that we find on Mars is a lot of craters from the meteorites from the asteroid belt hit, hit the country and uh, hit the Mars land's surfaces. And this is one that's kind of a crazy one, that it's a square crater. Uh, it's thought that maybe somebody uh, did some digging and uh, made it square. Another interesting thing is there's plenty of pyramids on Mars. Here's one uh, right next to this crater, and then you can see it blown up there. We also have craters that have bullseyes on them, one next to each other that look like a bullseye. Now, this gentleman is an acquaintance of mine, Dr. Gilbert Levin, is believed to have found life on Mars. Now, you probably didn't hear about it, but uh, he devised some 
experiments to take to Mars with the Viking landers in 1976 that would test for life and uh, basically invented this um, highly sensitive method and called the label released experiment and what they would do is um, square a drop of radioactive food into a tiny cup of Martian soil and monitor the air above the soil to detect the radioactive gas. In any case, the radioactive gas detected microorganisms on Mars at two places, two Viking landers 4,000 miles apart. He stands by his discoveries that life exists on Mars and did in 1976. And he's even more convinced that, in fact, it was there and found. Now, science had a trouble with uh, coming up with a concept that there was life on Mars and kind of said, no, no, there was some kind of geological problem or wh whatever. There were many excuses made, but uh, Dr. Levin and his people stand by the fact that they found life on Mars. Part of the way to show that there was life on Mars is to look at some of the Viking lander images. For example, this one is a big Joe, and it has moss on it, kind of an algae and moss and so on growing green. Now here's a Hubble telescope picture of Mars in February. And if you notice at the top, there's the North Pole. And it's quite large. Well, as the seasons go on in the spring and so on, the pole melts. <coughs> uh, and uh, at the time that it melts in the spring, Mars starts turning green. You can get out with your telescope and see this. Every spring, Mars turns green, so to speak. And that's this moss and algae and other vegetation growing there, which would indicate life, obviously. Here's a close-up of some of the moss growing. <clears throat> and we have uh, melting of the ice. And uh, we're not sure exactly what these are, possibly trees growing or just the melting of the uh, side of the, uh, the ice. <clears throat> now, one picture that we found on Mars was actually found by Dr. Buckley. Uh, he found, and this is on the... Um, Google Mars, you can look, go on your computer and go on Google Earth and go into views and go on to Google Mars and you can find all kinds of fascinating things on Mars yourself. And this particular one shows an area 55 miles long showing some kind of track on Mars, like a vehicle was on there. And we have seen what appeared to be vehicles. And here's a close up of the track, maybe turning around. Uh, other tracks, and this track, if you notice, goes to uh, what appears to be a bridge way over here, and here's a close-up of that bridge going across some kind of a chasm. A lot of these markings lead, lead to an area called Cydonia, and Cydonia is famous that probably everyone here has seen uh, pictures of Cydonia, at least the famous uh, face on Mars. He's up here in the right-hand corner. <clears throat> and that would indicate that there's some kind of uh, life there, that somebody built in the distant past uh, this picture of a person that looks kind of human. I've seen a few people out in the audience kind of look like this guy. <laughs> In any case, uh, here's another shot of, um, of Cydonia area with the, the face on the right, a place called the fort. And uh, here's the fort. There's several pyramids in the area. And we suspect, but we don't know, that uh, this area was hit by some kind of a nuclear uh, weapon and maybe that's why it looks a little bit old and in bad shape. In any case, uh, uh, that's an area that appears to have been a city at one time or at least some kind of a religious uh, area. Here's the face that most of you have seen up close. <clears throat> and 
it does show, you know, two eyes, uh, a mouth, lips, even some teeth. Now, there was a lot of uh, problems about this, uh, and NASA didn't like the fact that uh, people were saying they saw a face on Mars, so they took another picture of it, and it's not a very flattering picture. <laughs> and um, in any case, they say it's not really a face at all, but from the angle that it's taken and so on, you really can't tell. Now, a friend of mine, Dr. Tom Van Flandern, who unfortunately has passed away, worked at the U.S. Naval Observatory, and these are his conclusions regarding the face, that the natural origin hypothesis is disproved at odds of a thousand billion billion to one. It's pretty good odds. Artificially, the artificiality of Cydonia is established beyond a reasonable doubt. And I think his conclusions are correct. Now, <clears throat> I'm showing you a lot of images from satellite, and in Air Force, I got used to looking at them. This, this, these images are three pyramids in Giza, in Cairo, Egypt. And uh, in other words, you get the same similar idea of what the pyramids look like from space. Cairo, interestingly, means Mars. And <clears throat> it appears that the Egyptians feel some connection with Mars. And I think maybe we all have some connection with Mars. Um, this is the pyramid near the face of Mars, and it's one and a quarter miles high. Obviously, there are Pyramids are much larger than ours, which run about 80 stories high. Another view of the DNM pyramid. Um, <clears throat> they're very similar to pyramids in Mexico as well. The pyramids of the sun and the moon and not far from Mexico City. <clears throat> now here's uh, another view of the uh, Sidoni area. And we have this another face that looks kind of like the Egyptian uh, Ramses. In any case, uh, we'll see a lot of faces that look similar to Egyptian faces and wear Egyptian helmets similar to what uh, they have on Mars. Here's a uh, picture of the fort. Uh, it's thought to have been a fort in the past, given that name. Um, we have a hexagon pyramid, uh, crater in the lower left side there. And I don't know if you can see it, but what we often find where there's interesting places on Mars, there's also writing. I don't know if you can make out the writing there, but uh, for whatever reason, the, the letters E and Y, and Z, and G, and so on, that we recognize as you know, English writing, are often seen on Mars. Here's the uh, crater seen up close, the hexagon crater. There's no uh, natural reason to have a hexagon for a, for a crater. So it is odd in itself. And we're comparing, you might say, natural formations against uh, man-made or Martian-made formations. One of the things they've done, particularly the Soviets, sent in uh, infrared uh, satellites that could detect heat. And uh, these satellites detected heat in various places in Mars, also uh, right over Sardonia. Yeah, underground, there seems to be heat coming up which would indicate that there's some kind of uh, life or furnaces or something going on underground. Some kind of heating is uh, being shown uh, on our uh, infrared satellites. Again, the shot of the DNM pyramid and some, we're not sure what these are, but they seem to be some kind of a, uh, some kind of a structure and not natural. Now we're, here's a close-up of the uh, South Pole. And as I mentioned before, it melts. So if there's indication 
that the uh, Martians realize that there's melting going on and they have to capture the, the water. So this is a crater near the South Pole. And I don't know if you can see down here in the bottom, but there's like a dam. And the dam collects the water coming off the side of the crater. There's a lot of water underground, a whole underground system of water and oxygen. It flows down into the bottom of the crater and is collected and uh, pumped out. Then it's put into huge tubes. And that some of these tubes are uh, hundreds of feet wide, wider than uh, football fields and so on. And the tubes are move, move uh, generally from the poles, uh, away from the poles toward the equator, apparently carrying water and possibly a, uh, being a transportation system. I'll show you a series of these tubes and they're made in different ways. But I had this particular picture that was kind of uh, startling and I called JPL and I said uh, to the gentleman that was in charge of tubes, so to speak, what were they? And he said, well, they're sand dunes. And I said, well, I spent uh, three months flying over Saudi Arabia, anywhere from 50 feet to uh, a few hundred feet, and I've seen you know, thousands of miles of sand dunes, and those don't look like sand dunes to me. That sand dunes look more like waves in the ocean. The wind blows and it uh, creates this, this wave effect in the sand dunes. And, and they're pretty much standard and parallel to each other. And these are changing directions. And the wind blows the sand dunes, ca causing the, um, the appearance and this is changing direction in, in multiple directions, and it just doesn't make sense that the wind would blow, you know, first one way and then the other. In any case, I don't think they're sand dunes. He got very angry at me. <laughs> uh, I suggested that he get in a plane and fly over some sand dunes, and it might be helpful. <laughs> uh, there's lots of different ones here that we'll show you. There's uh, quite uh, interesting. Uh, and I don't think they're natural formations. That's my decision. And that's Joseph Skipper's uh, belief as well, who actually gave me this particular photograph. I think if you got inside these tubes, this is about what it would look like. This happens to be in Corinth, Corinth in Greece, but this gives you the general idea that there's probably water moving through the tubes and probably boats of some kind moving over them. And then as they get uh, further north, uh, <clears throat> there's indications that underground cities exist. Some is on the surface, but not, not everything. Here's a broken tube. And uh, they also spread out and go underground <clears throat> uh, almost like... Uh, some, something like subways or railroads, you know, that, uh, and this, this one looks like it has light sh shining up through it or else uh, light is from the sun is bouncing off of it. Hmm. We're not changing here. We're having technical problems. <clears throat> We're not able to change slides. I don't know what's the problem. My slide changer. You can look at this, this uh, tube rather close. <laughs> and imagine some kind of a subway being inside of it, and uh, trains or whatever, or even automobiles, that kind of thing. The average one is 
200 foot wide, about 200 foot diameter. But many uh, in certain locations become much larger, three, five, six hundred feet in diameter. Uh, and some, like this one, this is one of the largest one, is thought to be two miles in diameter. In other words, you could put a whole city underneath it, or at least a large town. I guess we're okay now. <laughs> oh, well, I'll go back, okay. This is the channel, the um, train that goes between the English Channel, but I'd just like to show you that it's a similar type uh, construction effort that uh, we feel that the Martians had made and that trains are likely to run in these uh, tubes as well. Here we're back to that one. And this is the large tube that's up to two miles wide. And this is the tube a lot of the tubes you can't see, you know, they're, they're running underground and for whatever reason uh, uh, the sand blew off of them or whatever, but, it, but they show. But they definitely show, you know, roundness and uh, seem to show something inside of them. This is an artist, matter of fact, I made this drawing. That's, <laughs> that's my artist's rendition of what they're like. Now here's a, you can barely see them on this, this particular one, but it shows that these tubes are throughout Mars and that uh, the astronomers a hundred years ago were probably seeing these tubes and calling them canals. In a way, they are canals. And that some of these tubes go join into what we like to call cities, particularly about 30 degrees uh, south, there's a whole series of city-like structures like this. This again shows a crater with water coming out of it. Uh, that's fairly common that you find these craters with this water system that's running under the surface. And there's a lot more oxygen uh, in the uh, land that's generally realized. Also, there's actually flowing water on there. This uh, Echus Chasma comes from the um, North Pole and appears to have flowing water in it. This is a European Space Agency uh, picture, both the last one and this one, and this, this is a close-up of it. And uh, within the red arrows, it shows water actually flowing. And then nearby is uh, some moss or vegetation a kind of green area here. And I don't know if you notice these perfect circles look like metal. I'm not sure what they do, but uh, they would indicate uh, some kind of life on Mars. Some, somebody builds something along the way. Another uh, European Space Agency picture that uh, indicates uh, water on Mars. And another European Space Agency picture. If you notice, um, they seem to be um, more willing to show water on Mars than the, a lot of the release that NASA has. Their satellite uh, also has more color than ours. Now we are sending up new satellites so we'll probably get better pictures. Again, possibly trees growing. Uh, we don't know what the vegetation looks like on Mars, obviously, for sure. Uh, these are kind of uh, cactus-like things. It's you know, kind of dry and cold, and uh, probably only growing is done in the, the summer, kind of like in Alaska or whatever. Pine trees, uh, like objects, vegetation. Here's uh, kind of cactus-like vegetation. <coughs> And uh, certainly evidence of uh, deep gullies and so on made by water uh, traveling across the countryside. There's a lot of evidence of uh, water and even floods on Mars. Um, <clears throat> Joe Skipper sent me this, this 
this particular object, which is kind of interesting, that he feels that there's a dome, a glass dome, over this picture. I don't personally see the dome, but there's uh, some reflections that he sees that uh, might indicate a dome. And he has much better quality images than we have looking here. Um, you know, in the millions of uh, pixels and so on, and that consequently you can pick up a lot more than, than we can. But you get the general idea that there's a dome with a very brightly lighted interior. It appears that there's a lot of mining going on on Mars. We don't know if that's done by Martians or aliens or if we're going there and doing it. But in any case, <laughs> somebody's there doing it. Uh, here's another mining manufacturing plant, which is uh, right near the um, equator on Mars. And uh, obviously it's warmer on the equator, so you have a you know, better ability to mine and dig into the soil and so forth. There's a lot of, uh, sounds funny, but rust on Mars. That's why it's kind of red. The oxygen created uh, rust through the air through thousands of years, and the, and the, and the land looks uh, rusty, frankly. But uh, there are plenty of uh, various kinds of uh, minerals on Mars that it would be worth mining. Here's another uh, parent uh, plant, and I don't know if you can uh, see this area up here, but this looks like um, a gun is spraying water, or uh, possibly used in, uh, in gold mining. Uh, we don't know what the liquid is, but it's being sprayed uh, out rather far distance. This is like a mile or so. Now, one NASA scientist, Dr. Joy Crisp from Princeton University, feels that there probably has been life on Mars. So not all scientists agree with each other. And frankly, a lot of scientists are starting to go along with our concept that there is life. Here's some odd looking parallel structures on Mars, a bridge-like st structure. Uh, in nature, you don't normally see this kind of a situation. And here's something odd, a, a um, radome. I don't know if it has radar in it, but it has, it is a radome on Mars that uh, looks like it was uh, made by Martians or aliens or whatever. <clears throat> now there's another, you might call famous city besides Cydonia, there's Elysium, and uh, it has uh, faces as well, and pyramids and a sphinx and uh, writing, again you see that letter Y. Uh, there's some belief that the Y means God, but, but uh, we don't know that as a fact, but that's supposition. Uh, landing pad and so on. Again, it, the area may just be old or it was actually damaged in a, uh, a nuclear war or whatever. This is a close-up again by uh, European Space Agency and it shows uh, some of the pyramids. Uh, one of the reasons to have pyramids is if you're getting hit by meteorites, they, they tend to bounce off the meter, you know, the meteor. So in any case, uh, they have a purpose as well as, you know, looking nice, that kind of thing. And um, we don't know exactly why the Martians decided to build pyramids, but uh, they may have brought that uh, expertise here. The other two pyramids at Lysium. One up close. And uh, all over Mars, wherever you see cities or anything of interest, so to speak, pyramids or so on, there's usually writing. And interestingly enough, it's, uh, it almost looks like English. Uh, in this case, uh, we're not sure exactly what it says, but it looks like sick, 
S I C K. Anybody sick? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> One interesting thing about Mars is they've been testing and they found that in the summer there's a tremendous amount of methane. They estimate 180,000 tons of methane. Well, methane is created in a couple ways by volcanoes. To our knowledge, there's no actual volcanoes that are operating on Mars at this time. As far as that goes, Mars is pretty dead as far as volcanic activity is concerned. But the other way to create methane is through vegetation, through plants and the like. And so it looks like that moss and vegetation is really there, that there's life there, that it's creating all this methane. Here's a, uh, one of the typical shots showing what could be vegetation, what could be a river, and uh, some tubes as well. Uh, again, uh, there's a lot of areas that look like they're evergreen forests. Our evergreen forests grow in, uh, you know, where there's snow and so on, so they could, could grow on Mars. This is uh, banyan-like trees. Arthur C. Clarke saw this particular picture, and he lives in Ceylon, and he said it's just like they're banyan trees, and that uh, this pretty much convinced him that there's life on Mars, and uh, it's one of those pictures that's convincing me that it's there. We're not sure what these are, but uh, they're kind of interesting, little shelters or whatever, but they don't look natural in any case. And uh, here's some structures at the bottom of this shot that have a certain amount of interest. And <clears throat> time for the football season, so they have their stadium. <laughs> and we can't quite make this out. I don't know if it's... Uh, the Jets or LA or what it is, but uh, age, it looks like an FX AG or something like that. Uh, I don't know if you can read it better than I can out there, but uh, it does look like a stadium to us. Or another thing that we find is huge, what you might call animals, like made in the uh, ground. It's almost like their big advertising sign, you know, buy your puma today. In uh, any case, somebody would have to fly over to see it, something like the NASA, uh, the Nazca lines down in Peru, you know, where you see all these different uh, pictures of animals and things, and something like that is on Mars. Here we have a ramp and a structure and rectangular openings. Uh, that don't, do not seem natural. And one of the things we find at various places, what it looks like where smoke has been coming out of the ground, probably where there's a, a city or, you know, some kind of structures underneath the ground and then the uh, heat comes out and creates smoke and after a time it creates these... Uh, dark spots, something like that's on your chimneys and so on. And th these are fairly common around Mars, indicating that uh, life does live underground. I like to call this guy Noah. Uh, he's kind of a funny looking guy. I don't know if you can make him out. He's at the top there. Uh, and then there's some kind of writing underneath him. But uh, it might be his face and his body. Uh, some of these pictures look better on a small screen than they do on a great big one. I can't do much about that, but uh, again, you can look up on uh, uh, JPL and so on and see these objects for yourself. Um, this is another f possible face. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here. There's also one kind of below where that arrow points a long, long face. If you can see the two eyes here, nose, mouth. <coughs> now Hale Crater on Mars is a very interesting place in that uh, we see lots of evidence of life 
in this particular crater. And up in the top left here, uh, right under the, here is kind of a Z-like uh, symbol and kind of an E-like symbol and then some structures that don't seem normal, don't seem natural. <clears throat> and then uh, inside the crater itself, there's what seems to be um, st structures as well. Boy. We're clicking up again. Oh, I'll change. Now you can see it a little better. I don't want to end show. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Any case, you can see these, uh, what appear to be structures. Now, we've asked NASA about it. They said, well, it's, it's transmission errors. <laughs> now, that any case, when pixels are transmitted, they can take on this, this square form or whatever. I can't verify that. <laughs> um, Jay Skipper and a Danish fellow d did this work. Uh, and uh, here's an interesting mining complex and a possible uh, a temple. We see structures that, that uh, look like they may be temples or churches or whatever that uh, there apparently was some kind of religion on Mars. And there's indication that they may have even brought it to Earth. Here's a picture picked up from uh, Google Mars. You can get on your computer real easy. <coughs> and uh, it shows kind of like a road or a tube structure with uh, what may be uh, actually um, structures on the side of these tubes. Not far away is this like city nest. These, these tubes will come from uh, the poles and then they'll kind of get together at, around uh, a city area and there'll be a whole bunch of them. Like uh, we suspect that they may live within the tubes. If you think about it, the oxygen level is not very high on Mars. The atmosphere is not very strong and that they could keep the atmosphere within these tubes and uh, of course the water and so on. But in any case, uh, even though there's problems, they could, could live. What size would those tubes be? Pardon me? What size would those tubes be? The size of the what? The size of those tubes in that last picture? Uh, most of those in the cities are about 200 feet wide. Now, <clears throat> I've showed you mostly photos from space now we're going to go down to the ground with our rovers, mostly the Spirit rover, which landed in 2004. And where the cross is is where it's landed. And it landed right near some of that moss and algae and so on. And this is the uh, people that run the rovers, and they're explaining what's happening and so on. Now this is kind of an interesting picture because it shows the surface of Mars, but it also shows a blue sky. You don't normally get to see a blue sky, but that's what it really looks like. Here's the rover, and it landed in January, and it worked fine for about a week, and we noticed that it was picking up some objects that appeared like it might be going into an, an ancient or ruined city, and it went off the air for about a week. When it passed that, significant area, it came back on and was broadcasting normally. But in any case, <clears throat> this is where the airbag bounced. And uh, I don't know if you notice this object. I'll show you up close in a minute. And what could be water off here in the area. And uh, kind of welcoming everybody was a kind of like a bunny or a piece, a coral or whatever from uh, possibly from ancient ocean. And here's that uh, piece of rock close up, but it has a rectangular drilled hole in it. And it looks like it's 
part of uh, something that uh, maybe blew up or whatever, but any case was part of a, a part of a structure. And this is the area that it was in. This is the kind of picture that's normally shown, <laughs> but uh, every so often it'll pick up something interesting like this uh, 1402 show. Now here's uh, Donald Ducks there. <laughs> and uh, Opportunity Rover, which was the other rover, uh, found wet soil when it landed. And you can see some of this wet soil, the dark area. It may have even had uh, flowing water uh, very recently. And then there's these blueberry-like algae. Uh, Dr. Marie Johnstone, who's a um, biologist, spent her life looking at algae and so on, says this is very similar to a type that we have on Earth, and that uh, in a pinch you could probably eat them. So there's like, <laughs> at least would give you some uh, nutrient. Here's uh, a picture taken by the rover of uh, shell-like objects, uh, silver dollar, whatever. Uh, and they actually dug into the ground and they found some uh, things that look like scorpions. I don't know if you can see them at the end of the the red line there. They're a little hard to pick out, uh, but they're actually probably fossils, but uh, it shows that life existed on Mars at one time, at least. Here's a uh, close-up of the, of the scorpion. It looks like he might be able to stick you as well. <laughs> and maybe they came here. They look, fairly similar to ours. This is kind of an interesting picture because the rover's going along and it's taking a picture of this object here. <clears throat> and we'll say this is, you know, slide one and here's slide two. And the next picture it grew some uh, like crab pincers. Now, I was told that it didn't really grow or it didn't really move, that, that it was just a change in the position of the rover, but uh, I thought it was significant. There's objects that look like bears or squirrels. I don't know, I doubt if they really are, but they may be fossils. Here's uh, like a lizard or an alligator. <laughs> uh, now these are all taken by the rovers as they go along the surface of Mars. And uh, when they dig down a little bit in these ancient uh, ocean areas, they find crinoids. Now, crinoids are like uh, lilies on Earth, sea lilies on Earth. And on the left there is the actual Earth sea lily. And on the, I guess it's uh, your right, is the uh, one on Mars, which would indicate that they're very close in comparison, and again indicating that there's uh, life on Mars, or at least there had been. Now this is kind of Twin Peaks area as they're going past this area. <clears throat> I noticed this rock. It looked kind of interesting, so I brought it in closer. And this rock is interesting in that it has an E and a G, and over on the I guess it's your right, a face kind of sticking out at you. And there's also a Y there. We'll show it even closer. And uh, I don't know if you can see the, the E here. And there's kind of a Y here and a G. And here's a face down here. Now, <clears throat> we were kind of questioning our own you know, are we seeing things that, uh, you know, other people don't see? I don't know if, I hope you can see it. So I, my granddaughter was in school and I said, would you take this picture into school, you know, kind of show and tell and see what the kids see. And they're, uh, I think they were eighth graders at the time. And they saw the E and the G and the Y and they told me there's a lizard up here on the, on the rock. I don't know if it's a real lizard or not, but uh, <laughs> but in any case, the kids are faster than we are. <laughs> here's, uh, 
Here's uh, again the, the E, the Y, and the lizard, and the face on the right, right side there. The, the, the E's and the Y's and the Z's and so on show up time and time again. Uh, I'm not sure what they mean to, to Martians, but um, it's kind of like Kilroy was here or something, you know. I don't know if you can see these. These are a little hard to see, but uh, there's a couple faces on the rocks. Uh, up here, there's a couple eyes and a nose and so on. Also here, that one in fact looks like Kilroy. And, uh, oops has ancient trilobites. I bought these, they're like a million years old or whatever, and you can get them on Earth. Apparently you can get them buy, buy them on Mars as well. If anybody goes there, they'll probably bring some back. This is another one of those interesting pictures in that the, you know, the rover moves along very slowly, and it takes pictures as it go of the ground, and it takes pictures of these uh, well, like shells or butterfly-like objects, and uh, some are uh, uh, blueberries and so on. But in any case, uh, it has this uh, wing-like thing, and over here in the, this one, it disappeared, just in a matter of uh, seconds or whatever. Here's a, uh, a log, petrified log, shown by the uh, rover, the letter C. Uh, faces here are pretty much in the center, kind of ugly faces, but uh, possibly a letter R, some more shells in the bottom right. Uh, I don't know if I'm going too fast for people to pick these up. Some are hard to see, I know. Two Ys, uh, we find those Letters pretty often. Hmm. I'm trying to use the arrow. Here it goes. Here's like a hand. You don't find many uh, rocks with uh, fingers on them. And here's uh, a typical face that we find buried in the sand. Uh, notice the helmet on top. We find that carried over into Egypt on a regular basis. P on the rock, and uh, what's interesting is there's a rock on top of the pile on your right there, and we question how that rock got up there, and kind of a, a face off to the right here. Hmm. Another uh, face-like object. This one is hard to see, but it, it is like a man and uh, the eyes are right in the middle. I don't know if you can see that. Some, some of them, when you, the pictures, when they're blown up, they don't come out real clear. I don't know if you can see it very well, but there is a, a face there and a kind of a man. Here's the indication of uh, explosion, kind of a kind of junk in a, in a possible head down on the right-hand side there. It looks like metal or something thrown around. Here's a possible uh, story from the time machine, kind of a statue type guy. One interesting thing is when the rovers are on the ground, the colors are uh, red, blue, green, and so on on these handles. And uh, oop. on these handles, you can see the colors on the ground are very clear, green, blue and so on, when they're on, when they're on Mars, they're all red, which would indicate that the coloring is being uh, made into a red color for some reason, rather than its real colors. One of the great cities on Mars is the Inca city, uh, which is very near the South Pole. You can see the square lines, again, uh, the tubes probably with the objects moving through them. Again, uh, it's interesting that JPL named it the Inca City because they saw the significance and how close it looked to uh, places on Earth. 
We also have a picture of Nefertiti from, from Egypt, <laughs> or someone who looks like her, and she has the helmet, which is also on the pharaohs of Egypt. <clears throat> Here's another uh, ruins and the lower part here. And a dog-like face. Apparently they have dogs on Mars. <laughs> And uh, there's a lot of controversy about this particular picture because some people feel that uh, this came from Google Mars and they feel that this is some kind of a, uh, a base, an alien base, uh, or maybe our base, but in any case, it's measures 700 by 100 feet. Again, we contacted JPL and they said that this was transmission error. So, uh, Perhaps it is. They said it's very common. It look, that's what transmission errors look like. So now you know. Now, <clears throat> part of the wild stuff about Mars is people claim, who are relatively, appear to be sane, you know, lawyers and so on, like um, Andrew Basigo, who claims that he met Martians at Curtis Wright Company in New Jersey in 1970. And we get that steady flow of people claiming that they've met Martians and that uh, they exist. And we get some people like Laura Eisenhower who claims that she was going to be sent to Mars. But these people seem to be, you know, uh, sane in every other way except they have these stories about Martians. So I was wondering if some of these stories might be true. On Mars we have uh, open pit mining. Here's an example of the mine that you can see here. As we move in closer, again, this is a European Space Agency photo. You can see the mining parallel lines going across. And you notice the Y and Z up in the corner here, and some over here on the other side. We'll move in closer. And the sign on the mine is YAW, or something that looks like uh, Yahweh. Yahweh written for the Hebrew God. So it might indicate that they have a uh, religious background and that we're picking up some of that data from here. Here again is the Y and the Z. The Y again is allegedly means God. We have a spirit nav camera shows a structure. This is on the ground, not far away. <clears throat> we have objects that look like uh, faces similar to the uh, Maya, Mayan gods in Peru. And here's the Peruvian gods in Peru, uh, but show the similarity. This, you have to kind of look to see, but it's something like the Sphinx. Uh, I'm going fast because I'm running out of time here. <laughs> here's some more writing in a crater. Interestingly, Nusi Crater has Juicy written in it. <laughs> Various faces. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they're usually in the center of the picture and they're a little difficult to see, but you normally see two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Uh, <clears throat> here's another tube-like structure that just kind of stops, so to speak. Uh, again, the faces. Faces in the Utopia region. They look to be damaged, but they look pretty much like some of us here. Uh, guy over there, that's, that's him there. But in any case, they also have strange lights on Mars that will be shining down and they'll have these bright lights, which is no you know, reason to be showing. <clears throat> that uh, we, might be a reflection of the sun, but in any case, it's something very bright. Uh, could be shining on metal or a mirror and creating it, or it's, it's actual light shining out. Again, one of these uh, city nests, again with these 200-foot uh, tubes, you may be able to see some uh, structures inside the tubes. These are usually around uh, point far south. Apparently, they have to be near the water for the city to function. Now we're going to Mars with the curiosity 
rover next year. It costs two and a half billion dollars, and they're going to land it in Gale Crater, where there's none of these things, <laughs> which is rather curious. <laughs> Any case, uh, here's a mermaid type structure. Up close, it looks like a mermaid. <laughs> Uh, again, this is, I don't know if you can see this, but this is one of the structures in the, um, carved in the side of a mountain like, and it uh, has resemblance to Ramsey's. Can, can you see it from this? Okay. This is the mermaid. It's kind of like a, at the bottom, there's almost like a snake or something. Uh, and possibly writing over there on the side. I don't know if you can see that. But it, the mermaid is rather famous. You can go to Copenhagen and see her. <laughs> but here it is on Mars. Here's Ramses again. I, I don't know if you can see the, the helmet and so on, on the, in the center there. <clears throat> now, not only is the United States interested in Mars, but the Soviet Union went to Mars with several of its uh, satellites. And as they uh, flew over Mars, they picked up pictures of UFOs. And here's Colonel Popovich, who came to the United States and showed some of these pictures and showed a UFO and uh, showed this picture taken just before Phobos II went off the air forever. And this, this is thought to be the last, or one of the last photos of Phobos of this UFO-like object, very similar to the one that I saw. And uh, the rovers pick up UFOs as well. They pick up UFOs in this, generally the cylinder-shaped UFOs. Here's a close-up of it, very similar to those picked up our Earth. So they, those UFOs may be coming from Mars to visit us on Earth. These are, by the way, about a mile long. Okay, here's some special speculation about all of this. <clears throat> the faces on Mars look fairly human. They might be us, you know, a million years ago or so. The civilization may have ended as ours began about three million years ago, possibly at the time of Planet X's explosion. They may have known that it was going to happen. There may have been a you know, crash of planets in space or something. But in any case, there's indications that they left Mars and uh, came here, possibly on Noah's Ark. If you read Noah's Ark, in the Bible and in many uh, ancient scriptures, you'll find that they brought animals and men to earth and floated on the, on the flood. But maybe it was talking about bringing people from Mars. Again, it's speculation, but it's something that could have happened. So I, you've seen a couple hundred pictures. Now I'm asking you, what is, your analysis. I don't know if I can see you that well, but uh, how many feel that there's no life on Mars and agree with NASA? Hmm. <laughs> we better send them a line about this. <laughs> how many feel that there's living microorganisms on Mars? <laughs> and that uh, Mars has vegetation? <laughs> Mars has a past civilization? And Mars has a viable civilization today. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. We just got this in from Mars to confirm that there is life there. They say I have three minutes remaining, so if anybody has questions, Yes, there's similar type things on the moon. N not so much Mar not so much Egyptian like 
but there are what appear to be uh, what I would call alien bases, uh, aliens on the moon. Uh, if you listen to some of our astronauts, they indicate that there's, there was a craft scene up there and that, that kind of thing. Yes. One of the things that turned out in the course of uh, information that I've received, as you know, there was a lot of carpet bombing done during uh, Vietnam by the B-52s. And one of the things that the B-52 pilots mentioned when they saw the craters on Mercury, when they saw the craters on the moon, when they saw the craters on Mars, is these craters look very similar to carpet bombing. Now in the Robert Morning Sky material, the Terra Papers, he does mention the fact that there was, there were civilizations on Mars and Venus, and that a lot of these traitors we see were the result of some sort of uh, war uh, that resulted in the annihilation of these Martian civilizations. So I just wanted to bring up this crater issue because we see a lot of it. Well, it's, you know, anything's possible. There is proof, so to speak, that there was uh, nuclear explosions actually quite large numbers of nuclear explosions on Mars. But they don't know, you know, if it was a war or if it was uh, natural explosions or what, what it might be, so. That uh, one of the things when I saw the, th when your thing you said uh, looked like a city with the smoke uh, stain, things like that, my thought was immediately, could, what, ab what about a blast, a blast scar or something like that? Uh, the large black black areas that you described now that looked like smoke from cities. But anyway, the question I have is when you uh, what you describe, you think you know it appeared to be about three about three million years old ago when that civilization petered out and we came into existence. When it, in this same speculation, when did it? Do you think the water actually began to pretty much dry up in, on Mars? Was that in well, like early geologic age, or, or well, maybe, or was it more contemporary? Well, nobody knows for certain. Yeah. You know, but uh, they actually think it was a little earlier. That the speculation was a little earlier. But Mars has essentially like an ocean underground. There's plenty of water there. It's just kind of hidden, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and there's lots of oxidation and lots of movement of the wa water under the Earth. As, as our own Earth has, there's a lot of water underground. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. That, sure that's it. Well, thanks for coming, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know we, uh, we have a few more questions for George. We ran out of time. George, before you leave the stage, though, I don't want to embarrass you or put you on the spotlight. Is it true that Tuesday is your birthday? Yes. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. A little bit early. But